Hello, people of the world. This is Paul Whittakin returning to you with the Universal Law of Numbers. And I have them here somewhere. And they're right here. And uh, I have a couple of topics that I would like to cover today. And hopefully you will learn something. And what you may learn is that you can have an epiphany. And I hope that someday, if you understand what I'm truly trying to say, that you will, and uh, you will gain a great deal of wisdom, knowledge, and satisfaction in so doing. Now, uh, yesterday morning, I woke up, I received the dreaded phone call, the one that I was expecting, and people in my family are concerned that uh, I've gone crazy. But they've always kind of thought I was crazy, and they never really understood the way I think because, as you may agree, they just don't like the way that I put two and two together. I just have a different way of doing that than they do, but we all love each other, and that's the main thing, and I'm not doing anything to try and embarrass anyone. I just embarked on this venture. I came across this uh, discovery. For me, it was a revelation. And I decided I was going to share it with the world. And I decided that I was going to think only for myself. And that I was going to let the universal law of numbers do the communicating. And I was just going to be uh, the intermediary. And uh, that I was not going to, to, to let anybody get in the way. I, I didn't need an affirmation. I don't need any affirmation. Of course, an affirmation would be nice and it would be, uh, you know, uh, great if other people understood this thing the way that I do and, you know, I got credit for that. But in reality, there's only one affirmation. And the affirmation that I need is from the universe and it's from myself, and I believe what I'm doing is for the good, and it's just sharing the beauty of nature, uh, you know, with other people. So, one of the questions that has been posed is, you know, but what is it good for? Well, what it's good for is, it is good for understanding the truth. And isn't the truth something isn't that something worth understanding? And isn't the truth worth striving for? You know, because in this world, and I'm an American, and I, I have one, two, three, four, five, I have seven passports, uh, actually. So I've always been an American, and I want America to be great again, too. And I think the way that we need uh, to make America great again is by setting an example, and that's how people in the world perceived us to be great, and obliterating others into uh, capitulation and submission will never accomplish that, and certainly not uh, adopting other people's prejudices and other people's enemies. Now, what I will do is I will just kind of cover some of the more basic, basic things today. Now, the first thing that I would say is, you know, sure, it, it appears to be an oversimplification, but that's the beautiful thing about it, and I do want to repeat that, and I want to repeat that over and over and over, because we have this universal law of numbers, and it is the periodic table of mathematics because it contains all of the numbers that exist in our universe the one that we know and the one that we live in. And they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And every number in the universe can be reduced to one of those numbers. And we have 0, 2, but 0, in effect, is not exactly a number, and it's not a member of the universal law of numbers, because by its very definition, it's something that doesn't exist. But we all recognize it, and I do too, because if I multiply 10 by 10, it's going to be 100, but it's going to be a one number. And if I multiply, you know, uh, 10 by 2, it will be 20, but it will be a two number, and it will abide by the laws of the universal law of numbers. But let's just take a little bit of a closer look at this universal law of numbers, because what it is, is 
It's showing us the building blocks of the universe. And the building blocks of the universe, they have uh, similarities. So look at the two numbers. Okay, we have two, two, four, eight, seven, five, one. And we can look at the five numbers. We have two, four, eight, seven, five, one. And we can look at the four and the seven numbers. They're four, one, seven, and seven, one, four. And they're essentially almost like identical twins. And I try and uh, point out how they are, in actuality, really the same numbers. And 3, 6, and 9, as we all see, they also follow the same sequence. So, in effect, they're even actually the same numbers. And one of the ways I do that is just by simply showing that by connecting the dots in the circle, that they're all going to become the same thing. They're just this equilateral triangle, okay? So, in effect, all of the codes, they're, they're really, it, it's just describing one code. And we could call that code 248751, we can call it 369, we can call it 714, we can call it 258, but in reality, they're all the same number. Because the universe is very simple, it speaks a very simple language, so that we can understand it. So I point out that 258 and 714 and 369 are the same number because in essence, if we go backwards uh, along the number line and cross zero, the 258 will turn into a 714 or a 147, and the 147 will turn into a 258, and if we multiply them against each other, etc., etc., they're going to be transforming themselves into each other as well. And 2 plus 5 is 7, uh, plus 8 is 15, and that's a 6. And 7 plus 1 is 8 plus 4, and that's a 12. And 3 and 6 is 9. And even the 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8 and 1 is a 9. And if we take the 2, 5, 8 and the 7, 1, 4 and we put them together, it's going to be 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1. And that's 27 and it reduces to a 9. And it does it in every single way. 1 and 2 is a 3. Uh, 4 and 8 is a 3 because that's 12. 1 and 2 is 3. 7 and 5 is a 3 because that's 12. 1 and 2 is 3. 8 and 7 is 6 because 8 and 7 is 15 and 1 and 5 is 6. Two and, five, 2 and 4 is 6, obviously. 1 and 5 is 6. And if we do it, 2 and 7 is 9. 8 and 1 is 9. And 4 and 5 is 9. So it's all always reducing to the one number, the number 9. And the number 9 is, very effective, is a very effective tool to describe the universe as well in its entirety. And there was a consortium of scientists from all around the world uh, that... Uh, conducted a study led by MIT scientists, and they did a very uh, elaborate computer-generated mapping of the universe, and what they came up, was, up with was something that looked like this. And that's very simple to understand, because it's a circle. But in reality, their circle was a sphere. And a circle is, or let's say, uh, a, a sphere is a circle. It's a circle in multi-dimensions. It's a circle that revolves around the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we can, you know, we can send satellites out into deep space and take pictures of the universe. And we can try and understand it by studying things like dark matter and dark energy. And we can measure the distances between galaxies and constellations and stars. And we can measure the distances between, you know, the earth and the sun and the sun and the moon and the earth and the moon. And for instance, if we were to measure the distance right now at this very moment between the earth and the moon, it might be 236,000 miles. We may be that far apart exactly, but now we're not because all of a sudden that number just changed because we're all moving. And if we were to measure the distance between the sun and the earth at this very moment, and it came out to 93 or 94 million uh, miles that we are apart exactly, well, now it's not anymore because it's moving and we're moving. So one thing I want to point out is that all of these universal constants that we have in science, which are measuring sticks 
of a, of a, of a sort, they all have to be measuring uh, moving targets. So in effect, they're moving uh, themselves. But all of the targets they're measuring and all of the measuring sticks that measure them, they're all going to be following the 369 code. So if we want to, uh, you know, try and understand the universe at its most micro uh, level, we can look into an electron microscope and we can see the behavior of atoms and we can uh, look at the particles inside, you know, and try and understand what they're doing, the protons, the neutrons, the neutrinos, the electrons, etc. But I believe that they're all just following the universal law of numbers code. So when we look at the universal law of numbers code, you know, in, in science, we always want to say, you know, uh, what numbers describe is they describe science, they describe mathematics, uh, and it kind of stops there. And anybody who goes beyond that is going to be a wacko conspiracy theorist. But I believe that the, the law of numbers actually describes everything, you know, including life itself. And if we want to understand something about any type of a situation and try and get to the bottom of it, you know, there's one way that I, one of my demonstrations that I uh, did, and I think this might help to explain uh, how that works. We have the universal law of numbers, but we can keep on just reducing and reducing and reducing. And if we do, we come up with, you know, behind the scenes, we come to this one. And if somebody were astute enough, they would notice that these are just really the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can see that they're the, the odd numbers and the even numbers. And if we add them together, we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'll go backwards. 8 and 1 is 9. 3 and 5 is 8. 7 and 9 is a 7. 2 and 4 is a 6. 6 and 8 is a 4. Uh, 6 and 8 is a 4. Uh, 1 and 3, well, 6 and 8 is 13. No, it's 14. That's a 5, of course. And 1 and 3 is a 4, and 5 and 7 is uh, a 12, which is a 3, and 9 and 2 is a 2, and 4 and 6 is a 1. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. But there's other ways we can do that, too. But you might come to that point and you think, well, okay, now I figured the whole thing out. Now I know what's really going on. But it's not true. You have to keep on going and keep on going. And then you'll start to see the three sixes and nines come into play. And they will start to take over. And we'll see that. And now it's only three sixes and nines. And now that whole thing reduces to a nine. And at that point, that's when you understand what's really going on behind the scenes. So what's going on behind the scenes is we have people in this world who want us to adopt uh, their enemies and they want us to adopt their prejudices and I don't want to adopt their enemies and I don't want to adopt their prejudices and I do want to see what's going on behind the curtain and I do want to understand it and I do want uh, you know to get to the bottom of everything uh, I always have always questioned everything and in that manner, I guess, is the way I came up with the universal law of numbers. So we will analyze the universal law of numbers a little bit more in depth today. And, you know, some may say, Paul, I think you're trying to play a trick on us. Because when I show things like this, you know, I'm just showing famous numbers, numbers that play very important roles in science and mathematics. And... Uh, you know, they're all going to be following the 369 code. So, yes, they all do follow the 369 code. So it, it wouldn't matter what array of numbers I really wrote on this piece of paper, because any array of numbers, if you add them, they will all always, if you do it correctly, they will always follow the 369 code. But some of these numbers follow it in a different way, and I think there's some information that can be gathered from that. We have the gravitational constant, and it follows the 369 code. And we have an ampere, and amperes also follow the 369 code. And we have Avogadro's number, and Avogadro's number also follows the 369 code. And if we do Avogadro's number to a different degree of specificities, 
Here I stopped at uh, you know 6022141. Here it's 6022147. And uh, you know if you add on anything number, it will still follow the 369 code. And I think that's the point I'm trying to make. Now, what about the periodic table of elements that we use in chemistry? Well, that follows the 369 code as well. And I'll put them in order, and I will try and illustrate that for you today. We have the periodic table of elements, and we add up the, uh, the number of protons in each element, and it gives us an atomic number, and it goes from 1 to 104, I think, now. And uh, it's following the 369 code as well. And that may be an oversimplification, but I think there's something more uh, deep you can understand about it. And that's why I try and point things out like that. And when we come to the very basic things, as I pointed out uh, in my last video, what we have is we have the multiplication table, the simple multiplication table. And if we reduce the numbers, we will see that all the numbers going up and come, going across will always follow the 369 code. And it will give us some form of symmetry. And these are the building blocks of the universe. And they're the only building blocks we have. But they're perfect building blocks. And it's just one way to understand what's going on at the very core of the universe. Because if we understand what the code is at the core of the universe, then we can have a better understanding of what goes on in that great complicated, you know, uh, celestial bodies, uh, the, great, the, the, the celestial bodies down to the tiniest, tiniest particles and subatomic particles and colors and quarks and the like and how they're behaving. They're just abiding by this very simple universal law of numbers, which is the law of the universe. So once again, the universal law of, law of numbers describes not only mathematics. It describes not only nature, not only music, not only art, not only literature, not only any or every not only anything, it literally is helping us to understand everything. And it's trying to teach us the truth. And I'm very sorry if I embarrass anybody in my family, but I take responsibility for my own uh, thoughts. And I wish that others of the world would do that too. And as far as you know, being concerned about what anybody else or what any others think about me or affirmation for anything that I'm thinking or describing, it's really quite irrelevant because the only affirmation that any of us ever needs is the affirmation from the universe, the universal God, the creator of the universe, or however you want to believe it, that's where we can, uh, you know, that's the only affirmation we will ever need. So please, people, think for yourselves, try and analyze things a little bit more closely, and you will find out that it's, it's always easier to get to the truth uh, if you really try. And that's what I wanted to bring to you today. And my name is Paul Whittakin, and I'm coming to you from sunny Arizona, which is in the universe. And I wish everyone in the world peace and happiness and have a very nice day.